Hello. One last thing before we go to bed. Yesterday was Father's Day and I've been thinking about recording this since yesterday. I kept thinking about my relationship with a father figure or rather the lack of a father figure. I am a product of an affair, so I was an unwanted child. I was told when I was 20 something that my mom tried to abort me three times, which obviously didn't work. And my relationship with my father was about rejection. He obviously didn't want me. And every time I saw him when I grew up, every time I saw him was at the courthouse because he was going to jail for back child support. So you could tell and I could feel that he he didn't want me. I felt the, re the rejection. So that was something that, unfortunately, I brought into my adult life. You know, I had a child when I was 17 and my entire life was about acceptance. I needed acceptance. I needed I needed to feel wanted and loved. And unfortunately, you know, when you are so damaged, what are you going to attract? You know, obviously, I would never um, blame the other people because it was me. It was my void in my heart that attracted them. So I was obviously hurt because I was recreating the the rejection, you know, the lack of that father figure. So obviously I had that issues. And at some point, I got so tired of it because, you know, having a, a child, when I was still a child, I was just growing up and damaged as, as, as it can be. I made a lot of mistakes with my children because it was all about me. It was about my, my hurt. It was about my validation. It was about me looking and searching that void in my heart, that lack of security. I mean, it was, it was dark. I remember being suicidal, you know, pretty much on a Sunday or every Sunday rather, because I couldn't take it anymore. I didn't see a way out. I was like, I'm going to die so sad. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I couldn't bear that. Not anymore. I mean, at that point, I couldn't take it anymore. And all I could think was, you know what? The only way that I could get rid of this pain was by committing suicide. But, you know, the Lord and His grace, every time I, I had those thoughts, which it was every Sunday, He will always remind me that I had two sons that only had me because I was a single mom shocking and I was gonna destroy their lives so that was the only reason that I never committed suicide and I was super close to it but I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't cause that pain to my boys so <clears throat> at some point I decided you know what I can't, I can't take this anymore. I have to do something about it. So I grew up as a Pentecostal and back in Puerto Rico, it was, it was just so much religion. It was never about a relationship with Jesus. It was just religion. And that was something that I didn't want to go back to because I couldn't take that either because it wasn't about love. It was about law which it didn't make any sense and I wanted nothing to do with God. But I think I was about 37 and 
I, I was done. I was fed up with the pain. I was fed up with the thought that I was going to live like this or like that for the rest of my life. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to go to church. And I'm going to start from scratch. You know, and, and it could be probably a cliche to you. But that was the only thing that saved me. It was giving my everything to Jesus and deciding that I was going to start afresh. It was a new beginning and it was hard. I mean, I call it the detox. The detox process. It took me about two years and within those two years, let me tell you, I wanted to commit suicide the same way that I that I wanted to commit before Jesus. But I was detoxifying from such a horrible life and I decided to seek counseling. I decided to read the Bible for the first time and all I could do was read the Psalms or re or in my mind, actually, no, actually, I remember that I made a point of declaring the Psalms and I was just crying, you know, for two years. It was, it was excruciating pain because once again, I was, I was in my detox process and I just wanted something completely new. My counseling was amazing. Obviously, I realized and, and a professional opened my eyes to realize that this wasn't about me, but it was my responsibility to have a new life because, you know, I couldn't use that excuse the rest of my life. Whatever happened in my upbringing, in my childhood, you, I, I couldn't use it. You know, it, I mean, I could have, but then I would have been miserable for the rest of my life. And that's not what I wanted. So my my thoughts since yesterday once again because it was Father's Day I remember in Psalms I think it was in Psalms at some point I read that God was going to fulfill every void in my heart as a father and as a mother you know, and that sounds kind of distant when you have that kind of relationship or the lack of that I just I just couldn't relate to God as a father when I never had like never ever in my life and I still haven't had a father figure in my life. So Jesus was the only or the father, rather, was the only reference that I had for a father. However, that changed my life. You know, I, I decided, once again, I decided to work on myself. I decided to educate myself. I decided to read the Bible. I decided to change my life completely through the grace of God because he provided that for me so I decided to take it upon myself to follow that and change my life and obviously you know I decided which it's it's kind of interesting that I picked up the book from Christy Jordan which is this book I'm not single. It's it's the single sabbatical. I'm not single. I am married. However, I decided to pick it up and realize that we had the same experience. I decided that I wasn't going to date anybody until I was healed in my heart. And I decided not to date for a year. It took about three years actually to start dating which I started dating my now husband and same thing with Christy she said on the first pages that she decided to be single for a year and 
one year turn into three years. So I thought that was interesting. But anyways, if you have the chance to pick up this book, once again, I'm not sponsored by anybody, but I would recommend that you pick it up and work on yourself. You know, you, you need to work on yourself. You need to make the decision that your past will not define your future. You know, you have to take it upon yourself to change your life. Once again, you cannot use the same excuse of your terrible upbringing as an excuse for a horrible rest of your life. You need to make the decision to change. And the only way that you can do that once again is seeking counseling, educating yourself, and deciding that enough is enough. I wanted to encourage you today because that is my testimony. I can only speak for my experience or from my experience rather. So I just wanted to just put this out there and, and praying that somebody will will benefit and and have the same change of life that I did. Once again, I can only speak from my experiences. I am not a professional. I am nobody special, even though in my mind I'm very special. In God's eyes, I'm very special. I'm very special in my husband's eyes, my grandbaby's eyes, you know, and quite a few people, but I am not that special. It's just something that I decided to do and it's something that I know if you decide to do, you can change. It's not gonna be overnight. Like I said, my detox process took about two years and it was hard because you're changing. You're changing your entire life. I mean, it was a lifetime of bad decisions and blaming God for my bad decisions. So it took a long time for me to, to find where I am. You know, and, and on top of that, you know, just trying, trying to, to feel a void that the only way and the only person that could fill that void, that void rather, was Jesus in my life. So I hope this encourages you to change your life. And hopefully, you'll send me a message letting me know that my testimony and my experiences, I know were not in vain because everything that we go through is for a reason. And I hope you are that reason, that, I, that that will change your life because it changed mine. So... God bless you, and I cannot wait to hear what your journey is. Have a good night.